It is a rainy evening and a thunderstorm is striking this city. There are two car chases between the two families. And according to this lady, it looks like they're from the Ning family. This man was confused about why are they there. He has already given up fighting for property and there is no threat to them anymore. Suddenly, Ning's family guard started shooting at their car. Their enemy modified their car to have brakes fail and even the door isn't opening either. His father doesn't have a choice but to save Ningbei by throwing him through the window of the car. Ningbei you must survive. Those are the last words of Ningbei's father before their car falls into the sea. Thirteen years later, we can see a man standing. He is Ningbei, the main character of our story. He arrived at Dragon City. It is time to settle the accounts of thirteen years ago. I'm Ningbei, and I'm back, Ningbei stated. Nevertheless, while Ningbei was walking, he was puzzled after he heard a group of people having an argument. This lady stated, Young Master Liang, these are the latest limited edition shoes you just bought for me. After wearing it only once, it was trampled and dirty by these two blind dogs. What should I do? The old man said I'm sorry, I'm sorry, children are ignorant. I lose money because of you. Do you know how much these shoes cost? You can't afford it even if you sell your sliced child. Liang Yu stated. Suddenly Liang Yu ordered his guard to throw the old man into the sea. But Ning Bei was triggered when he heard it while gritting his teeth. I'm here. Let's see who dares to move a finger on them. Ning Bei interacted. And Liang Yu angrily answered, Who are you? How dare you make trouble in my work? Do you know whose territory this dragon city belongs to? However, Ning Bei madly said, Do you know who this person is? He is the dragon city extinguishing flame soldier. The scars on his face are all his glory. In the raging fire, he guarded the dragon city and saved countless people, but now you are humiliating him. You should be executed. Nonetheless, Liang Yu just smiled and said, In Dragon City, no one dares to touch me. Because I'm from the Liang family, you can't afford to offend me. Ning Bei was enraged while looking at Liang Yu. And without a single word, Ning Bei suddenly grabbed Liang Yu and threw him into the floor. How was it? I have shown you what real power is. Ning Bei stated. At this moment, Liang Yu and his guards came down from the ship. Liang Yu was very angry. And he told Ning Bei that when he got off the ship, they would execute him. Ning Bei was just looking at them. All of a sudden, a group of soldiers came and Liang Yu was shocked. He doesn't have any idea who they are, but Liang's guard told him that their logo seems to be the North King's Blades. This group of soldiers is the Northern General Group. While they were in front of the stairs from the ship, they said, Welcome back leader. Ning Bei came down and stated that he is just a simple man with no rank or title so he just wanted to call him by his name. One of the soldiers named Muchin replied while bowing down who would dare directly address the leader by name. We dare not break the rules. Ning Bei didn't expect that Muchen will pick him up, and he told Muchen that maybe he crossed the line. And Muchen answered that if Ning Bei wanted to punish him then there is no problem. Muchen also asked Ning Bei if there was any trouble. And Ning Bei answered while looking at the group of Liang. He said that no one can touch him in Dragon City. Liang Yu was obviously afraid and said, Sir, this is a misunderstanding. Then let's continue this misunderstanding, Muchen stated. According to Ning Bei, others were not to blame, Liang Yu was, and suddenly Liang Yu was begging to spare him. However, one member of the Northern General Group arrested Liang Yu while they were heading out of the port. Outside the port, there are two women who are also waiting for Ning Bei's arrival. This young woman is King He, Ning Bei's fiancé, and this old lady is their grandmother. King He is out of patience and stated that they'd been waiting for half an hour. How come Ning Bei hasn't come out yet? Then she walked out and said, he made us wait for him. What sort of fiancé is he? I'll go back now. But this old woman stated that if she leaves, she will break her legs. Suddenly a man came out from the port and shouted that Ning Bei was on his way. While Ning Bei and his group walked toward them, this old lady is very thrilled. But King He said to her grandma that they need to take it easy. Nevertheless, a man came out and said, You've gone too far, Mu Chen. Did you forget crossing the line is strongly prohibited? Violators caught will be punished severely. Their grandmother was surprised that they'd all arrived and according to her, he is the central warblade Zhang Zhongyuan, Northern Tiger Mu Chen. I haven't seen you for years, Zhongyuan. Who do you want to report and severely punish? Ming Bei stated. Zhang Zhongyuan responded, The commander of Central China welcomes the return of the leader of Northern China. But Ming Bei just said that they are both commanders so there's no need to be so polite. However, Zhang Zhongyuan answered that all five of the world's greatest commanders are under the command of Ning Bei. So Ning Bei just concurred. At this moment, Ning Bei was looking at these two ladies, and he kneeled to his grandmother. As mentioned by his grandmother, Ning Bei has lost weight and grown taller. Ning Bei was delighted when he saw his grandmother, and they rushed to the car. 
But before Ning Bei hops in the car, he declares his soldiers to go back to North China and he commands Zhang Yuan to come with him. While on the road, this old lady stated that 13 years have passed in a flash and Ning Bei has grown up too. Then Ning Bei answered, if his grandma had not protected him back then, he would have died long ago. At the present time, their grandmother cheerfully introduces King He. If you disagree with our marriage, you can cancel the engagement. Ming Bei stated. King He was shocked and she couldn't believe what she heard, so their grandmother said, yes you can. King He expresses her feelings and said, Grandma, it's the 21st century and you still said a child marriage, my classmates are laughing at me. Nonetheless, their grandmother told them that the marriage was set by their grandfather Ning and their Su family, and according to her, no one can change it, unless their grandmother dies. On the other hand, their grandma asks if Ning Bei knows Zhang Zhongyuan, the Central War Sword, and North Tiger Muchen. Ning Bei answered that they are all very familiar. When he was by his side, Zhang Yuan often wiped his sword for him, and Zhang Yuan stated that not everyone can wipe the Northern King's sword. King he was thinking of Zhang Zhang Yuan. The dignified commander of central China was just wiping the sword of Ningbei and she even could not believe it. King he is the one that grandma likes. Then she is the one that I will protect for the rest of my life. If anyone touches her in the future, I will raise his three generations. Ningbei stated. He also ordered Zhang Yuan to announce to the whole world that Su King is the person he wants to protect. And if anything happens to her, it will be the day when the northern king's sword will descend. Zhang Yuan was surprised by Ningbei's decree. Their grandma was proud of Ning Bei's decision, but King He said that the global announcement is too much. Meanwhile, they have just arrived. Guards are welcoming their distinguished guests. Unexpectedly, this man in a gray suit cannot believe that it's Ning Bei. He even angrily said to their grandma, What are they doing bringing him back? They all know that the car accident back then was not an accident, but their grandmother still saved Ning Bei and offended the three heads of the Ning family. You should break off the marriage and get rid of Ning Bei, that's the best thing to do. These three young people agreed and said they should stay out of trouble. At the back of King's mind, Ning Bei is a visitor from far away. How can they bully people like this? Zhang Yuan was preparing to attract, but Ning Bei told him to stand down. Ning Bei is the son-in-law of the Su family, King He's future husband. As long as I'm still alive, no one can bully him. Their grandmother stated, but King disagreed and said that she didn't acknowledge the marriage. Grandma, since King doesn't want to, that's fine, and I treat her like a younger sister. If I cancel the marriage then it will be bad for King's reputation. If Su's family writes the withdrawal paperwork tomorrow, I will sign it. Ning Bei stated. King he asks Ning Bei if it isn't bad for his reputation. Ning Bei just smiled and answered, it doesn't matter. This man in grey said that if Ning Bei is okay with it, they should call off his wedding. You guys can try calling off your marriage. If you dare to call off the marriage, I will raise your Su family tonight. Zhang Yuan stated. This man just smiled and said, what are you? You want to destroy my Su family? Who gave you that courage? Zhang Yuan introduces himself as the commander of central China. Does he even belligerently ask if it is enough to destroy the Su family? All of a sudden, the other three commanders of China arrived at the scene. Commander Mu Chen of North, Commander of South China, Guo Beifeng, Commander of West China, Lu Gi. Of the five major commanders in China, there are only four now. Yu Beifeng and Lu Gi, welcome back Ning Bei with pleasure. The Su family was shocked by what they witnessed. As per Commander Mu Chen, is the Su family very powerful? So are we enough to destroy the Su family today? And yet, these guys didn't believe it at all. The man in the blue suit said that they are liars. This old lady was enraged and Ning Bei just told her grandma not to worry. As stated by this old lady, she is not worried about Ning Bei. Rather she just hates that the boys of the Su family didn't know what they were doing. Instantaneously, Ning Bei gives an order to Zhang Yuan to show them what they are. And straight away, the central China commander Zhang Yuan issued an A1 alert. The whole city with 72 areas will be under martial law. This lady confirmed to Zhang Yuan and stated, Do you really want to open this? This order is not going to be circulated among ordinary people. The dragon guards will be on standby. However, Ning Bei told Zhang Yuan that 72 areas are a bit too much, just one area only. And Zhang Yuan followed. Zhang Yuan withdrew the previous order and changed it to one area. Then this lady followed. Meanwhile, this man was confused. Why did he see Commander Zhang Yuan respecting him? Then the lady told them that he is just a commoner Ning Bei. These three men were shocked by what they heard. Ning Bei, the overlord of the northern border. This man stated. Then this lady answered. Yes, he is the northern king Ning Bei. And according to her, Ning Bei's files are on the ninth floor of the building, which is off limits even to her. At this moment, the Su family still thinks that they are just fooling them. 
This man even thinks that they hired a few actors to support their scene. Let me hire a few actors to support the scene too. This man stated while trying to call on his phone. But he was shocked when his phone had no signal. The Sioux family was alarmed when there was no signal in everyone's phone. This man from the Sioux family was confused because in just a few minutes, cell phone signal was all cut off. He slightly doubted if it was really done by Ningbe. At the present time, Dragon Guards have arrived, and they command everyone to leave the place. The leader of the Dragon Guards ordered his colleagues to take the Sioux family and everything away. Everyone in the Sioux family was startled. This old lady was worrying about the Sioux family, but Ningbe told her not to worry. They will just teach them a lesson in her place and nothing will happen. And Ningbe told her grandma that he had to go back to Ning's family. This old lady was worried and remembered what happened 13 years ago. However, Ningbe said that even though it's been 13 years, he can never forget that rainy night. Ningbe said goodbye to his grandma and to King He. Nevertheless, this old lady had a revelation and told Ningbe that his mother isn't dead. Ningbe was startled, and according to the revelation of this old lady, her mother is a professor at the university. Ningbe walks away and heads to the school. Meanwhile, at Dragon City University, Ning Bei's mother is in her wheelchair while she's teaching. Ning Bei arrived at the school where her mother was in. He was really surprised when he saw that her mother was still alive. On the other hand, this young lady student said that she was so bored and she wants to play outside. And the man beside her replied that he wouldn't dare. But he advised the girl to go since her father is the vice principal of the school. The girl answered that's true, but she, the mother of Ningbe, is stricter than the other professors. She'll get written up for sneaking off. According to this boy, to increase her salary, she has to rely on having a reputation for being serious and responsible. This boy was confused. What is the reason why their professor spends so much effort? She's so pretty, so why not use her body to make money? Maybe she's a paraplegic. Unfortunately, Ningbe heard their conversation. Ningbe told them to respect their professor. But this young boy angrily stated, Who are you? Why do you care? I'm just thinking of some ways for the old lady to make money. What's bothering you? Is she your mom? Without a single word, Ningbei attacked this young boy and tried to punch his face but suddenly Ningbei heard a voice say, Stop. Ningbei fainted when he heard her mother's voice. Ningbei's mother cannot believe that it was Ningbei until they meet. They are both so happy. Outside the building, there is a man sweeping. He is Ning, the father of Ningbei. Hey Ning, look up and see who it is. The lady stated while Ning was puzzled. Dad, Ningbei stated. Ning recognized him and called his name. And they hug each other. However, Ning asked Bayer who told him to come back while it was still not safe. Ningbei madly answered and told his dad not to worry because of the injustices his mum and dad suffered for the last 13 years. He will use the sword of the Northern King to wash away the shame. Meanwhile, Ningbei and his parents are on their way home. But this young lady saw Ningbei. And she reported to her father who is the vice principal of the school that Ningbei is the one who beat her lover. The vice principal was enraged and questioned Ning Kanglin about what sort of relationship he had with Ningbei. Ning replied that Ningbei is his son. However, the vice principal is still angry and said that he doesn't care what Ning's son does. Ning needs to discipline his son. He also stated that Ning almost forgot when he originally knelt down on his own knees just to beg for his job. In addition, he threatened to fire Ning from his job. Ningbei was confused about why his father knelt down to the vice principal. He also asked his father what happened. But his father just said to forget it because the vice principal is from the Ning family. While Ningbei and his family attempt to leave, he said that the vice principal is a dog of the Ning family. Suddenly the vice principal heard it and angrily asked if who is the dog called Ningbei. He glanced at the vice principal and said, Neil, all of a sudden, Ningbei extends his hand and there is a blue flame appearing. It hit the vice principal's knee, and immediately he kneels down. Her daughter asks him what is he doing. At this moment, Ning Bei and his parents walked away from them. According to him, all the insults and indignities that her parents suffered these last years, he will get justice for each and every one of them. The vice principal thinks that his legs were broken. Meanwhile, at the house, Ning Bei's parents, his father told him to carry his mother's wheelchair, and his father will carry his mom down the stairs. Ningbei asks if this is where his parents living for all their years. And his father answered, except for the humidity. Without a word, Ningbei called Changyuan and ordered him to get some people to pack the stuff of his parents and move it to the Ning family. However, his mother told him that it had already been so many years so she asked Ningbei not to worry about them. But Ningbei was enraged and said, how can he let it be? He also remembered the day 13 years ago when they were chased into a dead end and forced to such a tragic end. 
When he returns to the capital, he will execute three people. The first to execute is Ning Fuguo. Suddenly, the Eastern China commander has returned, and according to him, he has the sword of the Northern King. He smiled and jokingly told Ning Bei that he wants to play the sword for a few more days. Ning Bei smiled back at him and told him to stop messing around. Ning Bei asks him to give him the sword, and immediately, he gave it to him with pleasure. While Ning Bei is holding the sword, he glanced at them and stated that they do not have to follow too closely since he wants to stay with his parents for a little bit. Nevertheless, these two commanders are having conversations. The commander of Eastern China explained that once the sword of the Northern King has been drawn, no one can stop it. But he is confused about what kind of person could force his boss Ning Bai to personally hang up the sword. However, Zhang Yuan told him that they are going to the Ning family since the opponent was not very strong but they cannot act benevolently regarding this. Later in the evening, rich people from different dynasties and different organizations gathered in Ning's dynasty to give sympathy and join the birthday celebration of the patriarch. A golden Buddha gifted by the president of Yuan Sheng Financial Group. A man in white also stated that Mr. Liang gifted a 100-year-old ginseng and 16 jade bracelets. The other man in the black suit said that the chairman of Eastwind Textiles has arrived and was giving a pair of Ming Dynasty flower vases to the patriarch. All of a sudden, the guards of the Ning Dynasty were upset. When they saw that there are people in the way of the Ning Dynasty, throwing flowers, bringing an old coffin and a huge iron bell, led by the commander of eastern China. They gave the old huge bell to the Ning dynasty as a gift to the patriarch. However, this commander ordered his people to cry and instantly they followed. According to the narrator, gifting a bell is an exact homonym for attending to a dying family member or taking care of funerary arrangements. So it is really rude to give a bell because it is synonymous with wishing that the other party dies. Nevertheless, a man from the Ning family appeared and asked if the Ning family offended him. And this commander replied, not at all since it is his first time to be in the Dragon City. He even asked how could be offended. In addition, he stated that a big iron bell like that is really hard to find on the northern border. However, Dragon City being the capital city of Eight Dynasty, there really are a lot of relics. This man was puzzled when he saw Ning Kunglan, Kin Hulan, and their son, Ning Bei. Ning Bei is the eldest son of the Ning Dynasty's third generation. At this moment, people are gossiping about Ning Bei. The child fled from the family 13 years ago. Some others say that Ning Bai's family was hunted down by its own Ning family. So Big Brother's family is coming back. Hulan, this wheelchair seems a bit old. How about I get sister-in-law a new one? Stated by the man from the Ning family. However, Kin Hulan answered him. No need. Suddenly, another man from the Ning family appeared and rudely said, You still have the gall to come back. Get out. But the man in black told him to mind his words, and he invited them to come in and have a discussion. But at the back of his head, he shouldn't air out the family skeletons in public. He will just wait until they got inside and destroy them then. While they were entering, suddenly someone tripped Ning Bai's father's foot. Fortunately, Ning Bei was able to prevent his father from falling to the floor. What are you doing? This is a birthday celebration. It'll be too late to kneel after you get inside, the man in white stated. Nonetheless, Ning Bei told his dad to go inside since they are the main characters of that show, so he can't be absent. The commander of eastern China was holding two swords and stated that he will take care of the rabble. And then suddenly he attacked him using his swords. The man was hit on both legs, while he was moaning in pain. The two guards beside him were shocked because they noticed that the sword was the northern cold sword, the unique sword of northern border. This man shouted to Ning Bei that it was a little too excessive. Ning Bei glanced at him and angrily asked for his apology and threatened him that he would do more. However, this man was worried and said, What else are you going to do? And Ning Bei replied, How about exterminating your Ning family? It suddenly rained that night. The patriarch welcomed his visitors and thanked them for coming. Out of the blue, the doors were opened by these two commanders. Ning Bei and his parents came in, and he greeted and wished his granduncle good fortune and long life. Everyone was surprised while looking at them. What a good young man, with a blessed life and so courageous, I accept your congratulations. Granduncle of Ning Bei stated, According to this man, Ning Bei doesn't even know etiquette when the younger generation wishes happy birthday and how they cannot kneel. The Eastern China commander interrupted him and said, Who do you think you are? And according to him, that person is not as excellent as his boss, Ning Bei, so he doesn't have the right to get involved. This man answered and proudly introduced himself as Liang Shailong and in Dragon City. People are always respectful of him once they know his name. However, the Eastern China commander never heard of him, 
and the bold chubby man beside him interrupted them and told Lang Shailong while indicating to this commander that he doesn't even know where this insect crawled out of and doesn't even know Yang Shailong's name. All of a sudden, team leader Xiao Yunchen came in, and the patriarch was startled when he saw the team leader Xiao Yunchen. The commander of Eastern China told Xiao Yunchen that the bald chubby guy insulted him, and he asked how do they handle that. Automatically, Xiao Yunchen ordered to turn this man into mincemeat and feed him to the dogs. But Zhang Yuan cut in on them and told them to stop messing around. Instead, teach the bald man a lesson by closing down all his businesses including his subsidiaries. And Xiao Yunchen followed his order. Meanwhile, the Eastern China commander slapped the face of Xiao Yunchen and told him that he is the main culprit so don't think that he can escape. Nevertheless, Qin Hulin reminded Ning Bei of what he promised her. Ning Bei commanded this commander to stop and instantly said, Yes sir. The patriarch was wondering where they came from. He also thinks that they probably bought off team leader Xiao to support them. He asks Xiao Yunchen if his GUI group has always stayed out of their affairs. Why today of all days did he come to interfere in their internal affairs? Ning Bei suggested, Since it's a family matter, let the Ning family themselves take care of it. He also ordered everyone who is not related to their family to leave now. And without a word, all the people that are not related to the Ning family have left. While this Ning family is the only one left, the patriarch told Ning Bei that to hire the Dragon City's team leader Zio must cost a lot. But unfortunately, he left too and he asked Ning Bei who will protect him now. So it seems the old man thinks we're nothing without Zio Yuanshi. Eastern China commander stated, this old man ordered his grandson Kang Gu to clean up the place by sending the family Ning Bei away from them. Kang Gu's body was covered with purple flame. The patriarch never thought that Ning Bei's family would have its own elementary martial artists. Qin Hulan was worried while calling his son's name. At this moment, Kang Gu was preparing to attack them and stated that, with his power, it will send them away. But suddenly Ning Bei's body was surrounded by blue ore and Kang Gu can't move his body. Kang Gu was wondering what was happening. Ning Bei angrily looked at him and said, Kneel. Without a single word, Kang Gu kneeled at him. Everyone in the Ning family was startled while looking at them. Kang Gu was terrified and said, War. War God rank. Everyone was shocked. Some of them didn't know what really happened and some of them said that they didn't even see Ning Bei move. The man in the brown suit was confused if Kang Gu really said, War God rank. Once again, Ning Bei used his power and said, Kneel. And immediately, they knelt down. According to this commander, Ning Bei went to the northern border at seven years old. Within a month he reached warrior rank so an elementary martial artist is not even comparable. The patriarch was startled and wondered how it happened. Commander of Eastern China explained that his boss Ning Bei became god-ranked at the age of 17. That was when he was given the title of king of the northern garrison. He refused the title of king and called himself commoner. The patriarch would have to call him the northern king Ning Bei. Qin Hulan was shocked and suddenly sad when she heard it and asked Ning Bei how much he suffered these last years at the northern border. Ning Bei glanced at her mother and answered that it's not important since he is okay now. He also stated that, on that rainy night 13 years ago, his grandfather was sitting in that very hall, and he was murdered right there by the patriarch with his subordinates, and because of his fourth uncle who helped him to escape. His uncle was stabbed through the heart by Ning Kanghai in that same hole. Note, the fourth uncle refers to the fourth son of his father's generation. In addition, Ming Bei said that he saw it clearly that day. His grandfather protected him till the end. His fourth uncle treated him like his own child. If he doesn't take revenge, he will never let go of his hatred. All of a sudden, the patriarch admitted his mistakes and he even begged for Ning Bei's mercy. But Ning Bei was enraged while pulling out his sword and according to him, Ning Kangu tried to hunt Ning Bei's family. Additionally, he told the patriarch that truly worthy of being called the second elder master of the Ning family is absolutely ruthless and cruel when making a move. If his grandma from the Su family hadn't saved him, he was afraid that he would really have died at the patriarch's hand that night. However, Ning Bei throws the sword on the floor while saying to his opponent that, all of the Ning family, no one is innocent. This old man realized that he had hit karma while he was looking at the sword on the floor. Without a word, the patriarch stood up and rushed to get the sword. However, he cannot lift it and he is startled and wondering why does it feel as if this sword has grown from the ground. Ning Bei laughed at him and told him that the sword of the northern king has a weight of 360 kilograms so that's why he can't lift it. Nevertheless, Ning Bei grabbed the sword, and without a word, he slashed the patriarch's body. This son of the patriarch was enraged while running towards Ning Bei and stated that he will fight Ning Bei to the death. But unfortunately, he was also executed by Ning Bei. At the back of Ning Bei's mind, 
He told his fourth uncle who passed away that he can rest now in peace. All the clans of the patriarch were surprised by what happened. Ning Bei glanced at Ning Kangu and angrily told him that Ning Kangu will kneel for the rest of his life. He will let him experience his father's humiliation and his mother's pain. Ning Bei told his dad to stay because everything in the Ning's family belongs to him since he is the original head of the family. He also told his mom that he needs to go to the graves of his second and fourth uncle to see. He ordered them to wait there. Meanwhile, Ning Bei and his subordinates are heading to the graves of Ning Bei's uncles. When suddenly a black car appeared, Commander Lu Gi was wondering who that is. In the present time, an old man came out from the car and stated that he wanted to see the boy that was abandoned by the Ning family 13 years ago and he wants to see how powerful he is that he dares to even injure his oldest grandson of Liang family. At this moment, Commander Lu Gi said that he wanted to clear the path while he was attempting to pull out his sword. However, Ning Bei told him not to draw his sword since they are in Dragon City, not in the northern border and there are no foreign invaders there. All of a sudden, a car from the Su family arrived at the place. Mr. Liang was wondering why this old lady came there. And according to this man in a grey suit, the Su family declined a long time ago so they don't have to be afraid of the old lady. But Mr. Liang answered that even though the Su family is weak, they have a strong foundation. The Su family will not fall unless the elderly woman dies. Suddenly, this old lady interrupted them and asked them if who they thought they are. She also asked Mr. Liang if they came there to wish the Ning second elder a happy birthday. No way. Who the hell is he? He was so avaricious. He executed his own older brother. Why would I wish that geezer a happy birthday? Mr. Liang stated, in accord with Mr. Liang while pointing his hand to Ning Bei. He was there because someone from the Ning family injured his eldest grandson. He wanted the Ning second elder to personally answer for that. And this man confirmed the man who struck him. The eastern commander was smiling and told them that if they want Ning Figuo to come out, it will be hard because he's cold to the bone. He is afraid that if they look for him, they will find a corpse. Mr. Liang was surprised and couldn't believe what he heard and he's trying to ask the commander for confirmation if the Ning second elder really died. But the commander just smiled at him and asked Mr. Liang if there's anyone who could pick a time to die. Nonetheless, this old lady told Mr. Liang that she will handle the matter regarding Shailong and she requested him to go back since it's raining very hard. At the back of Mr. Liang's mind, Ning Figuo actually died and the old lady advises him to leave it alone. He was thinking what sort of misfortune happened there. While looking at Ning Bei and his group, Mr. Liang was pondering where this Ning family kid came from. This whole affair seems a bit dangerous. Suddenly, Mr. Liang agreed with the old lady's advice. But his grandson, Shailong was disappointed and asked the old Mr. Liang if they were just going to leave like that. The son of Mr. Liang also told him that even though Ning Bei hit Shailong, that is the same as slapping their face. This old lady advised Mr. Liang to think carefully because the wealth that Mr. Liang's family accumulated over a century was not easy to build up. She told him to not allow the Dragon City's seven great families to become six. Madam Su, I accept your kindness, but my eldest grandson's assailant must be handed over, Mr. Liang stated. However, the commander of eastern China wants to attack the Liang family but Ning Bei stops him and say that the one they are looking for is Ning Bai's younger brother, but Ning Bei will not hand him over. All of a sudden, Mr. Liang called Fei Dao. Liang Fei Dao. Nevertheless, King He was worried about Ning Bei and she told him to be careful and according to her, Liang Fei Dao is the Dragon City's fourth strongest fighter. But this old lady told King He not to worry because Ning Bei said that he would protect her forever. Ning Bei certainly will keep his words. Meanwhile, Ning Bei wants to show King He what the differences in strength are between ancient martial artists. Ning Bei explained that at first there was a martial disciple. People at that stage are not much stronger than normal people, then comes martial artists. The elementary martial artist would be considered a master compared to normal people like Liang Fei Dao. In addition, Ming Bei uses his power and is surrounded by blue flames. While saying that, above martial artists are warrior ranks, warrior general rank, and war god rank. The mark of the war god is the unparalleled pressure which can overwhelm an army. Ning Bei glanced at King He and told her that he would forever protect her. Suddenly, King He's face blushed and she sighed. Moreover, Ning Bei said that at the northern border, he had over a hundred war gods under his command. At this moment, Yang Fei Dao was afraid. A huge snake appeared on Ning Bei's back while he was explaining that among war gods, there are differences. Over there is Ning Bei's brother, who is the northern border's current king of the northern garrison. Then Ning Bei attacks Liang Fei Dao by just extending his hands and pointing to him. Unfortunately, Liang Fei Dao was hit on his chest and fall to the floor while groaning in pain. Everyone in Liang's family was shocked. Liang Feida was coughing with blood. Meanwhile, 
Ming Kanglan suddenly came and said that he didn't know that his uncle Liang came back. He was asking for apologies for not welcoming Mr. Liang properly. Mr. Liang was puzzled and surprised by the return of Ming Kanglan in the Ning Dynasty. However, Ming Kanglan explained to his uncle that Ming Bei doesn't know etiquette and since he came to visit them, he invited Mr. Liang to get inside. Without a word, Mr. Liang with his subordinates came inside. At this moment, Mr. Liang's son never thought that there would be so many people hiding inside. He was confused about what exactly is the Ning family. They were puzzled when they saw Kangu kneeling. And according to Mr. Liang, he is one of the three that manages the Ning dynasty's affair. Aside from that, he is also the strongest ancient martial artist and yet, he's been forced to kneel. At the present time, Mr. Liang saw blood on the floor. He realized that he should have listened to old lady Su's advice because clearly, there's been huge changes in the Ning family on that day. He asks himself what he is doing there. On the other hand, Ning Bei assisted his grandmother Su to take the seat of honor. Mrs. Su ordered King He to find his aunt Ken. However, Mr. Liang is still questioning Kung Glan on his return to the Ning family. And this old lady, Mrs. Su, proudly answered him that Ning Kung Glan was not only returned, he is also now the newest head of the Ning family. Mr. Liang was speechless. According to Ning Kung Glan, he doesn't have a talent, but starting on that day, he will take care of the Ning family and he hopes that he can count on these two elders to help, guide and support him. Nevertheless, Ning Kung Glan introduces his eldest son of the third generation, Ning Bei to Mr. Liang. According to the narrator, as mentioned previously, this doesn't actually mean MC is the oldest in age of his generation. MC's grandfather was the first son of his grandfather and MC is the first son of his father. It could be the case that one of MC's uncles might have had their children earlier than MC's father. Mrs. Su told Mr. Liang that his family has many promising youngsters in its younger generation, like Shea Long and others. However, Mr. Liang just sighs and asks this old lady to stop joking compared to Ning Bei. Shea Long is a disgrace. At this moment, Mr. Liang said that it's getting late and he should go back to his place. And suddenly, they walked away. While walking, Mr. Liang stated that the discarded son of the Ning family has returned. The Dragon City is going to change. On the other hand, Ning Kung Glan asks Ning Bei where he is going since it's already late. Ning Bei answered that he had to go see his second and fourth uncles, but he said that he would just return quickly. Meanwhile, in the cemetery, there are two graves that have been ransacked. Unfortunately, it was the grave of Ning Bei's uncles. Ning Bei was startled. Instantaneously, he ordered the four commanders to investigate. And without a word, the four commanders investigated it. They went to the cemetery caretaker's place and kicked the door. The caretaker was confused about who they were and what they wanted to do. Zhang Yuan told him that the two graves of the northeast section were missing. He was enraged and asked him who took the ashes of Ning Kangnan and Ning Kangsha. And the caretaker was terrified while answering him that he doesn't know. Zhang Yuan questioned him once again, but this time, he was preparing to pull out his sword. Instantly, this cemetery caretaker kneeled and begged Zhang Yuan not to execute him. Then he revealed that it was a young couple who stole the ashes of Ning Bei's uncles and he also told them that it happened seven years ago. Zhang Yuan asked him, why can he still remember it while it happened seven years ago? And this man answered that the man and woman who stole the ashes gave him one million yuan just for him to be silent. All of a sudden, Zhang Yuan offered to give him another one million yuan for his knowledge on what really happened. And this man was startled when he saw the check of a million yuan. At this moment, the four commanders have returned to Ning Bei. Ning Bei asks them if they found out what happened to his uncle's grave. Immediately, Zhang Yuan told him that seven years ago, a young man and woman came and took the ashes of his uncles away, and he showed the description that the caretaker gave to them. Ning Bei glanced at the description and ordered Zhang Yuan to find an artist to do a proper dry. He also commanded Zhang Yuan that when they found them, he wanted to execute them on sight. According to Ning Bei, Mu Chen was the diplomatic envoy of northern China. Mu Chen frightened the martial artists of all five of the northern provinces. Mu Chen used the power of his position and commanded all of the special forces. And suddenly they move out. While they are walking, Ning Bei commanded them to go back and they instantly followed with pleasure. Meanwhile, at the Ning residence, Ning Kanglan was disappointed when he saw the documents. Ning Bei entered the room and told his dad that he should rest. Ning Bei asked his dad if there's something wrong with the finances of the Ning family. And his dad answered that there is a huge problem. According to Ning Kanglan, the Ning family's financials were not managed well and currently, the family has a debt of 1 billion and the company stocks are put up as collateral. Ning Bei just smiled at his dad and told him that he will take care of it. Suddenly, Kin Hulan angrily told his husband to let the Ning family handle their own affairs and stop making trouble for himself. Then Ning Kanglan told her that he would not. 
On the other hand, Ming Bei asked his fiancée why she didn't go back. She answered him that her grandma asked her to stay and talk to her aunt Kin Hyulan. However, Kin Hyulan told Ming Bei not to worry about their situation and let his dad handle it. Ming Bei smiled and replied to his mom that it's not a problem. Meanwhile, in this scene, Ming Bei was trying to call someone but the person in charge said that the president was resting and told Ming Bei to make an appointment in the morning by 9 o'clock. Ming Bei responded to the person on the phone and ordered him to wake the president up and told him that he is the commoner of the northern border. He also ordered the person in charge to call Ning Bei's back in one minute. However, Ken Hulin told Ning Bei how he asked for help like that. Ning Kenglan also asked Ning Bei who he called. But Ning Bei just smiled at him and said that it was just a nobody. In the meantime, Ning Bei went to the kitchen to get some midnight snacks. What a horrible attitude. Who let you be so spoiled? With an attitude like that, it would be weird if someone actually helped you. King he stated, all of a sudden. Ning Bei's phone rang and these two ladies were startled and they were wondering who's calling. King He said that they actually returned the call and this time, it is on a video call. However, they accepted the call. They were surprised when they saw the man on the phone. According to King He, the man in the video is no other than Kai o -si, the world's richest man. Ning Kanglan was also startled when he heard that the nobody that Ning Bei is talking about is the world's richest man. Kai o -si asked Ning Kanglan who he was and Ning Kanglan gladly explained to him that just now, his son Ning Bei called him. Ning Kanglan also told Kai o -si that if he is busy, he will just let Ning Bei call him later. Kai o -si awkwardly answered that he is not busy on that day since it's his day off so he has plenty of time. At this moment, Ning Bei came out from the kitchen and Ning Kanglan rushly showed the phone to Ning Bei and handed it over to him. Your Majesty, Kai o -si stated. But Ning Bei told him to just call him by his name since he was just in his house. Kai O Si agreed and called Ning Bei as Commander Ning. Kai O Si started to explain to Ning Bei that earlier, his phone was not nearby. Otherwise he would have answered Ning Bei's call immediately. However, Ning Bei just told him to not worry because Ning Bei just called him to remind him of a favor he owed. According to Kai O Si, three years ago, Ning Bei saved his family so if Ning Bei needs help, he is willing to pay any price that Ning Bei wants. At the same time, King He just realized why Kai o Si is very respectful to Ning Bei since he owes him his life. Ning Bei assured Kai o Si that he needed cash at that moment then suddenly. Ning Bei asked his father if how much will be enough. Ning Kanglan answered that it might be a bit big since there was a loan of 8 billion yuan plus there are some short-term loans. Nevertheless, Kai o Si offered them 10 billion and he asked Ning Bei if it was enough to repay him for what he did to him and to his family. Ning Bei smiled and asked his father if 10 billion is already enough. But Kai o Si interrupted them and said that if it is not enough then he can add on another 10 billion US dollars. These three were shocked when they heard that it is a US dollar currency. However, Ning Kanglan told Kai o Si that it is too much money. He also stated that if they are talking about the US dollar, at most 2 billion will be enough. Kai o Si was startled and he reconfirmed if 2 billion is already enough. Ning Kanglan answered him that it's already enough. Ning Kanglan also wants to count that as a loan. He also stated that once the Ning family has enough funds, they will pay him back in full with interest. But Kai o Si said to consider it as a gift and they don't have to pay him back. However, Ning Kanglan insisted that the Ning family must pay that money back, otherwise, they cannot accept it. In addition, Ning Kanglan also called Kai o Si a sincere person, but at the back of Ning Bei's mind. Kai o Si is just a shrewd businessman who wants to use that opportunity to latch onto Ning Bei. Nonetheless, Ning Bei told his dad to forget it, and as long as his dad happy, it's been taken care of. Then he ordered him to go to sleep. Meanwhile, Ning Bei glanced at King He and asked her if she doesn't have a test tomorrow. However, King He was surprised why did Ning Bei knows it. Ning Bei told her to sleep early because by tomorrow he will give her a ride. On the next day, at Dragon City University, King He has arrived at the school premises. Suddenly, the lady in pink asked King He if who gave her a ride since the car she took to the school is from the Ning family. However, Ning Bei showed himself, and this lady in pink was amazed by Ning Bei's good luck. He immediately asks King He of who he is. But before King He answer her question, this lady in pink already figured out that he is Ning Bei, the betrothed of King He. The lady in pink also asked Ning Bei which university he went to. But King He told her not to ask them because Ning Bei didn't go to university. Nevertheless, Ning Bei told the lady in pink that he did not attend a normal university, rather, he went to the Northern Liang Military School. Ning Bei also asked this lady if that counts as a university. Meanwhile, Du Yang appeared and he was shocked when he heard that Ning Bei is from the Northern Liang Military School. 
Then the lady in pink asked him if he knows or heard about the Northern Liang Military School. All of a sudden, another man appeared in the scene and stated that the Northern Liang Military School is a third-rate school. And according to him, they just put up a sign with the word school to deceive people. But Du Yang called him rubbish since his older brother is also in Northern Liang Military School. And his brother is quite amazing. Okay, okay. So your older brother is the hope of your village. Thank your ancestors that he managed to make it into such a rubbish school. That better. Stated by this with yellow hair while Du Yang was enraged. Unfortunately, Ning Bei heard what he said and Ning Bei suddenly moved out. From the car, King He was worried because she knows it will be bad if Ning Bei flips out again. So she came to Ning Bei in a rush and told him to go back home. But Ning Bei was confused, and he asked her, why is she in a rush to get him to leave? This man was courting King He so he's wondering where King He's fiancé is from. He suddenly introduces himself to Ning Bei as Shi Jiangxian, and he was apologizing to him because he had never heard about Northern Liang Military School. However, Ning Bei just looked at him with a smile, and this man was enraged when he saw Ning Bei's reaction. According to Ning Bei, it's necessary for idiots to know about the existence of the Northern Liang Military School. On the other side of the story, this lady in pink was angry because she thought that she was involved in Ning Bei's rebuke. But King He just advised her to ignore Ning Bei since he was not talking to her. In accord with Dang Su, Northern Liang Military School is a five-year school, entering at 16. Everyone who graduates becomes a field officer and can be regarded as the birthplace of great generals. Shi Jiangxian asks Ning Bei again if what's his rank in the Northern Liang Military School at the present. Ning Bei immediately told him that there is nothing special about him. He is just a mere commoner. Shi Jiangxian really has no idea what he's saying. He even told Ning Bei that he is just a fraud who has come to their university to fool them. However, Dang Su was puzzled. King He said out loud that Ning Bei wouldn't lie. Moreover, Ning Bei wouldn't bother to fool Shou Zhengxian. He also asked Shi Zhengxian to stop making trouble for people. Nevertheless, Ning Bei told her fiancé that she is thinking too much of Shi Zhengxian to believe that he can make trouble for Ning Bei. Then he enjoined King He to go to her class and told her that he will pick her up after her school. However, King He asked Ning Bei if what do we have going on in the afternoon. Instantaneously, Ning Bei smiled at her and answered that he will going to execute someone. Du Yong and Shi Jiangxian were startled by what they heard. But Shi Jiangxian laughed at Ning Bei and said that Ning Bei is a delusional crazy person. Ning Bei was nearly piss off. Nonetheless, King He worriedly reminded Ning Bei of his promise to her mom that he wouldn't get in fights. And he answered her that he knows. At this moment, Ning Bei confirms this guy is from the Shi family. And yet this guy arrogantly answers that Ning Bei should know that he is not someone Ning Bei can afford to provoke. He also commanded Ning Bei to stay away from King He. Ning Bei was enraged while approaching to get inside the car and he ordered Shi Jiangxian to tell Shi Quanjia that in the evening by exactly 8 p.m. Ning Bei will respectfully await him. Who the hell do you think you are? You deign to have my eldest uncle go and meet you. Go get your head checked. Shi Jiangxian angrily stated. This time, Ning Bei ran out of patience. Without a word, he attacked Shi Jiangxian by using his power and hit him on his shoulder. Shi Jiangxian was moaning in pain. King He felt disappointed while saying that Ning Bei struck again, and Ning Bei sped away in his car. Meanwhile, Ning Bei had already returned to his home. At the present time, Ken Huilan told his son that Ning Kangu is still his uncle after all. In addition, Ning Kangu was kneeling the whole night and she asked Ning Bei to let Ning Kangu go and let him get up. But Ning Bei is full of hatred and told his mom that she don't have to worry about it because Ning Kangu also spent whole night hunting them down before. Ning Bei can't let him go, just like that. Ning Bei was facing his mom while saying that the second person he will be going to execute is Kin Feng. Kin Hulan tries to talk to him, but Ning Bei barges in and asks his mom if she will try to stop him. In this scene, while Ning Bei is in the car, he recalls his past life with his family. It was a rainy evening when his mother was begging to the Kin family to let Ning Bei, and she didn't care if she would die. The important thing is that Ning Bei will live. Ning Bei was still very young at that time. Ning Kangdang and Ning Kangsha. Ning Bei's uncles arrived at the place and told Kin Hulan to stop begging to the Kin family. They also stated that they have to go before their opponent catches them. But Kin Hulan told them that no matter what, she is still part of the Kin family then she continues to beg them. Suddenly, one of Ning Bei's uncles took them towards the car and said that they must go. But before they even hop into the car, all of a sudden, the door of Kin residence opened. Woefully, Ning Bei and his mother saw with their own eyes that Kin Feng slash and executed Ning Kang. Ning Bei's second uncle, Ning Kangsheng was shocked when he saw his brother's death at the hands of Kin Feng. 
At this moment, Ming Bei and his parents arrived at the residences of the Qin family. These two guards of the Qin family were surprised when they saw the Ning's family car arrive. The guard with yellow hair is wondering if who's from the Ning family came over. However, this guard with purple hair just told him that it doesn't matter who it is. Then he ordered his colleague to hurry and open the door and inform the butler that a Ning family member had arrived. While they are entering, Ning Bei said that, on that rainy night, he can still remember those red doors of his grandfather's house that were shut very tight. Kin Hulan sighs while saying the name of Ning Kanglin. In the present time, they have arrived at the place and there are people waiting for them. Look at this, you've already reached the house and you're still not getting out of the car. This man stated. However, Ning Bei told him that he'd like to invite the head of the house to personally open the door of the car for him. The people from the Kin family were shocked when they heard it. Some of them were wondering who that is. Some of them also think that it sounds like a young person. Nevertheless, this man offered to open the door of the car. Suddenly, they were both startled when they saw Kin Huilan and Ning Kanglan. Kin Huilan called his second brother Tengshin. But Tengshin was enraged and he told Kin Huilan that he was not her brother. In addition he also stated that Kin Huilan haven't been a part of the Kin family for a long time. The man in a grey suit ordered their guards to kick them out. He thought that it was Ning Kanghai. However, Ning Bei came out from the car and asked him, why are they in such a hurry to kick them out? He also asked them if they were feeling guilty. This man asked Ning Bei who he is, and he answered Ning Bei that their kin family is one of the seven richest family and plays a very important role in Dragon City, so they don't have to feel guilty when facing anyone. Ning Kanglan came out from the car and said, Really? And he handed the documents to Tengshin. But Tengshin was questioning him about what it was. Then Ning Kanglan told him to talk after he took a look at it. While Tengshin was reading the documents, Ning Kanglan and his family were proceeding to go inside. Tengshin was startled while reading the documents. Nonetheless, this lady asked Tengshin what it was. Instantaneously, Tengshin told her that it's their contract with Ning Conglomerate. This man was still in shock while asking Tengshin, how can Ning Conglan have their contract with the Ning Conglomerate? Ning Bei and Ning Conglan glanced at them and ordered him to get inside and sign the termination contract. What? What did you say? Do you know how much our kin family paid for these projects? What are you talking about? These 18 projects have used up all the resources of our kin family. How can you terminate our contract with the Ning family? Tengshin and Ragely stated. However, Ning Conglan told them that the reason why he cancelled the contract is that he, Ning Conglan is now the chairman of the Ning Conglomerate. He also asks them if it's good enough for them. Tengshin cannot believe it. And according to him Ning Kanghai is the chairman of Ning Conglomerate. He is wondering why Ning Kanghai gave it to Ning Conglan. Nevertheless, Tengshin tried to call Ning Kanghai to ask what was going on. While Ning Bei was just staring at them, the man in the gray suit asks Tengshin, how was it? But Tengshin told him that Ning Kanghai didn't answer his call so he will call Ning Fuguo. Unluckily, Ning Fuguo didn't answer as well then the man in gray ordered Tengshin to call Ning Kangu. Fortunately, Ning Kangu answered his call. Tengshin asks Ning Kangu on what exactly happened. However, Ning Kangu told him that he went to look for him. But Tengshin was still confused about who was looking for him. Ning Kangu answered him that it's Ning Bei, the one from 13 years ago. Tengshin was worried and felt terrified when Ning Kangu advised him to not provoke Ning Bei if he didn't want to be executed. Tengshin was wondering what exactly happened to make Ning Kangu, who's one of the top 10 martial artists in Dragon City, to be so fearful. However, Ning Kanglan commanded Tengshin to sign the documents. The Kin family was feeling hopeless and speechless while looking at each other. This lady told Kin Hulan that they are family, and she desperately ordered Kin Hulan to persuade his husband to not force their family to die. But Kin Hulan's eyes were awake and satisfyingly told her that it's too late to have regrets. Nevertheless, according to Ning Kanglan, when he and Kin Hulan got married, he used all the resources of the Ning family just to raise the Kin family from a tiny company to one of the seven great families. In addition, Ning Kanglan stated that he would take it back now. However, this man glanced at his back and asked his brother to sign in. At this moment, the third brother of the Kin family has arrived at the scene. Ning Bei looked at him, and he is no other than Kin Feng. This man was asking Kin Feng what he meant. And according to Kin Feng, his brother should have heard that the Ning family isn't doing much better than them because the Ning family spent over 10 billion in the new district and have taken huge losses. The Ning family was under a lot of pressure to withdraw their funds. And without the Kin family, they won't be able to support themselves. Furthermore, the new district is a money sink. It will be good if the Kin family gives up at the right time. But the project still belongs to the Kin family. 
Then Kin Feng told the Ning family that they have to give it to them. However, Ning Kanglan knew that they would say it while he was handing out new documents. He told them to look at it. In addition, he told them that everything that the Kin family has have already been arranged for them to take care of. Once again, the three brothers were startled while reading the documents. All of a sudden, Kin Feng was very angry and stated that the Ning family are extremely exploitative. But Ning Kanglan answered and told them that they were right. The Ning family is there to take advantage of them. According to this man, they've invested over 6 billion, but the profit of the three small projects won't exceed 2 billion. Suddenly, Kin Feng ordered his brother to sign the papers, but his brother told Kin Feng if he was crazy too. Somehow, Kin Feng stated that the Liang family is willing to become a shareholder. Once the three projects are finished, it will be enough to repay their bank loan and afterwards, the Kin family can recover. Then this man from the Kin family agreed to sign the papers. At this moment, while the Kin family was signing the documents, all of a sudden, Ning Kanglan's phone rang, and he told Ning Bei that it is Kaiosi. Ning Bei advised his dad to answer it. These people from the Kin family were surprised when they heard the name Kaiosi, the richest man in the world, and they cannot even believe how they could know someone like that. Meanwhile, Kaiosi asks Ning Kanglan if he's not bothering him during Ning Kanglan's lunch hour. Ning Kanglan instantly answered that he's not busy. However, according to Kylo C, it has to do with the Ning family because all the directors of the PG group unanimously agreed to invest in the Ning family. Ning Kanglan and the man beside him were both shocked at this moment. In addition, Kylo C and his colleagues are willing to invest 10 billion US dollars for 10% of the shares of the Ning conglomerate. Kylo C also asks Ning Kanglan if that's okay with him. The three brothers of the Kin family cannot believe what they heard. 10 billion for 10% of the shares. That's like a gift from the heavens. Is this really okay? Ning Kanglan stated. However, Ning Kanglan showed the phone to Ning Bei while stating that 10% is plenty. Suddenly, Kylo C and his colleagues saw Ning Bei on the phone and immediately they stood up and gave respect to Ning Bei while saying, King of the North, Your Majesty. These three brothers from the Kin family were confused about who Ning Bei really is and why even the richest man in the world gave respect to him and called him King of the North. Meanwhile, Kyo C once again offered 5% since Ning Kanglan said that 10% is plenty. And the man beside Kyo C also stated that even if it's 1%, they will unanimously agree. Ning Kanglan agreed with them, and as for him, it is a deal. While Ning Bei was looking at his father, at the back of his mind, as long as his dad is happy. At this moment, Kyo C and his colleagues were very glad and happy and according to them, money is no object at all since the northern king is on their side. On the other hand, this man from the Kin family was enraged while saying, Do you think you can take down the Kin family like that? Do you think money can get you everything these days? Do you know that ancient martial artists exist? However, Ning Bei told them that Kin Feng is a middle-rank martial artist. Nevertheless, Ning Bei ordered his dad to take his mom out for a walk. But Ning Bei's parents already knew what would happen. On this scene, we can see that Ning Bei was using his power and surrounded by blue flames. At the present time, while the Kin family was looking at Ning Bei who's surrounded by blue flames, these Kin family suddenly kneeled in front of Ning Bei. So this man stated that Ning Bei is an ancient martial artist. However, Ning Bei told him that he doesn't know ancient martial arts. Nevertheless, at the back of this guy's mind, that's why Ning Kangu said to not provoke Ning Bei if he doesn't want to die. Nonetheless, while Ning Bei was just standing, Kin Feng suddenly took out a weapon from his jacket. Then he instantly approached to attack Ning Bei's back. But when he is about to stab Ning Bei, all of a sudden, Ning Bei didn't even move and just used his power. That caused Kin Feng to freeze. With an instant, Ning Bei glanced at Kin Feng and asked him if that's how he executed Ning Bei's second uncle. In addition to Ning Bei, just to gain favor with the Ning family, Kin Feng executed Ning Kang in from behind in the most despicable way possible. After that, Ning Bei extended his hand and used his power while saying, die. Instantaneously, a powerful force was hit into Kin Feng's body. Then he suddenly fell into the floor. Nevertheless, while Ning Bei was exiting the facility, at the back of this man's mind, Ning Bei is the northern garrison's war god. On the other hand, this guard called his master and madam. Then he told them that Mr. Su King Hui has just arrived. With an instant, Ning Bei together with his parents came out, and they were glad to see Su King Hui. However, Su King Hui told her aunt Kin that she brought some good birds' nests for her. But Ning Kanglan asked him why he brought gifts, and if he still treated them as outsiders. So Mr. Su King Hui told them that this is how it should be. Nonetheless, Kin Hulan asked him if he would come by to see Ning Bei that day. 
But Su King Hui was just speechless. So Kin Hulin told him that they will let them talk. Then she said that they were going home first. After that, Su King Hui told her to take care. At this moment, Ning Bei told Su King Hui to sit. Then he asked him what sort of difficulties had the Su family encountered. Nevertheless, according to Su King Hui, even though the Su family isn't as strong as before, but they don't have to rely on outsiders. Su King Hui said that he can take care of it himself. In addition to Su King Hui, Ning Bei's Ning family isn't doing much better than they are. But at the back of Ning Bei's mind, Su King Hui has quite the backbone, much better than the rest of those guys from the Su family. With an instant, Su King Hui offered 300 million to Ning Bei since that is how much he can give at that moment. And in addition to Su King Hui, that should help the Ning family through the Ning family's emergency. But Su King Hui told Ning Bei that the only condition is that Ning Bei will cancel the engagement with King. After that, Su King Hui handed this card that has 300 million to Ning Bei. But Ning Bei just told him goodbye. So Su King Hui got enraged then he told Ning Bei that he knows Ning Bei is an ancient martial artist and that Ning Bei is very powerful. However, the northern garrison is where Ning Bei's life is. So he asked Ning Bei if he even knew what King likes. In addition to Su King Hui, Ning Bei doesn't know anything about King. He also said that King won't be happy if she marries Ning Bei. With an instant, Ning Bei stated that that's why Su King Hui turned the engagement into a trade. However, Su King Hui told Ning Bei that if not, then what? Because according to him, the marriage was originally a transactional one. All of a sudden, this man came in and told Ning Bei that there was someone looking for him. So Ning Bei told the person to come in. With an instant, this lady came in while saying, King of the North, Your Majesty. Instantaneously, Su King Hui was confused why this lady called Ning Bei as King of the North. However, this lady introduces her name as Mu Zai, the president of PG's Asian Investment Branch. And according to her, she received President Kai Osi's email so she brought over 10 billion US dollars for the Ning conglomerate. Su King Hui was instantly shocked by what he heard. After that, Ning Bei ordered his disciple to take this lady to his dad to sign the contract. So this guard immediately followed Ning Bei's order. Nevertheless, Ning Bei told Su King Hui that he is not interested in money and if Ning Bei really wanted 100 seconds of billions of US dollars, people would naturally give it to him with two hands. In addition to Ning Bei, his father's generation arranged the marriage, so he told Su King Hui to have his grandmother come and talk to him about it. Nonetheless, Su King Hui was left speechless. At this moment, Ning Bei was thinking that the Su family didn't hesitate to take out so much money to get Ning Bei to break it off. So Ning Bei was wondering what they were up to, because they definitely aren't doing this for Su King's sake. However, this man reported to Ning Bei. With an instant, Ning Bei asked him if he found out who took away his second and fourth uncle's ashes. But unfortunately, this man told him that the captain sent him to report that they didn't find it. Instantaneously, Ning Bei got mad and he squeezed this glass until it broke. So this disciple told Ning Bei that they didn't find any clues about their ashes but their people in Luo City sent over some secret information. Then this man told Ning Bei that their people in Luo City found traces of the fourth Ning elder. Ning Bei was shocked and couldn't believe what he just heard. So he clarifies to the man if his fourth uncle was still alive. With an instant, this man told him yes but at the moment, they have only found traces. So Ning Bei ordered him to contact the branch in Luo City. Then he told him that he wanted all hands on deck to find the whereabouts of his fourth uncle. However, Ning Bei cannot really believe that his fourth uncle was still alive. Meanwhile, at the present time, Ning Bei ordered Xiao Yunchen to go faster. So he immediately followed Ning Bei's order. But unfortunately, there was a traffic jam happening on this road. So Xiao Yunchen was doing his best to move. But this truck driver told him to stop honking his horn since it's no use. And according to this man, he drove that route every day and he was always stuck there for two to three hours. With an instant, Ning Bei commanded him to send a helicopter over. So Xiao Yunchen told him that there's one on mission nearby. After that, Ning Bei ordered him to tell them to come pick him up and he will help them with their mission. So Xiao Yunchen instantly followed Ning Bei's order. At the present time, the people in this area were confused about what's happening and why there was a helicopter there. However, this man lowered the stairs so that Ning Bei and Xiao Yunchen could get on. Meanwhile, at the forest, Ning Bei together with his subordinates arrive at the place. Instantaneously, Ning Bei asked them about the situation there. But Kobayashi didn't know who Ning Bei was so he asked his colleague who he was. However, Xiao Yunchen told them to stop evading the question and answer. So Kobayashi told them that they came to check on reports of people missing in the area, only to be attacked by a beast. After that, Xiao Yunchen asked Kobayashi if he was a junior warrior then he told him that ordinary beasts shouldn't hurt him. 
Nevertheless, this guy with blue hair told his team leader that the beast is very ferocious, with a speed of 10 meters per second. And according to him the beast should be at the level of a warrior, and they are no match for it. With an instant, Xiao Yunchen ordered them to take the injured and leave and they will take over there. But Ningbei told him that he's afraid that it's too late if he wanted to leave since they've already been watched. All of a sudden, there is something suddenly moving at the edge of the lawn. So Kobayashi told them to look over there. But this creature is very fast and they cannot even see it. Nonetheless, this lady suddenly appeared on the scene while saying, that's enough. Are all of you Dragon City group so useless? However, this man beside her told her little sister to not talk nonsense. But this lady was enraged then he asked them again if they aren't very powerful on weekdays. Why can't this work? Instantaneously, Xiao Yunchen was asking who this lady was. According to this guy with blue hair, the name of this lady is Liu Linger, the granddaughter of Liu Lao who is a famous doctor in the Central Plains. In addition to this man, when she went to the mountain to collect medicine, she encountered the beast, and Xiao Lin was injured to save her. However, this man told team leader Xiao Yunchen that his little girl is not sensible, so he told them that he's causing them trouble. But Liu Linger asked his brother who is ignorant. Nonetheless, while Ningbei was staring at Liu Linger, he suddenly told Liu Linger that there is a hundred-year-old medicine in her medicine basket, which can heal pain. But Liu Linger asked Ningbei what he wanted to do, and she told him that is what she found. All of a sudden, Ningbei told them to leave. However, Liu Linger angrily asked him what he meant. So Ningbei told her that if she thinks they are useless, then Liu Linger can leave on her own. With an instant, Liu Linger's face suddenly turned pitiful while saying to Ningbei that there is a beast there so Ningbei has to protect her. After that, Xiao Yunchen explained to them that the task of the Dragon City team at that time is to execute the beast, not to protect her. Then Xiao Yunchen told her to leave on her own. Nevertheless, Liu Linger cannot do anything but all of a sudden, she angrily told them again that these guys are ruthless, and she said that when she saw her grandpa, let him deal with them. Instantaneously, Xiao Yunchen told her that Liu has practiced medicine for many years, and having a descendant like her is considered a disgrace to Liu Lao's family. At this moment, this guy told his sister that it's all her fault that's why they were kicked out, but this lady just told him to stop talking. On the other hand, Xiao Yunchen told Ningbei that no matter what, Liu Linger is also Liu Sanjin's granddaughter, in case that bastard is real. But Ningbei suddenly got alerted, when this black beast was approaching to attack Liu Linger and his second brother. With an instant, Liu Linger was shouting for help. At this moment, Liu Linger was stunned while looking to this black beast's. But all of a sudden, while Xiao Yunchen said that it's not good, a piece of leaf was suddenly appeared in his back, and hits this black beast's head that caused the beast to completely fell down to the ground. Nonetheless, while this this man is assisting her sister, Ningbei was the one who executed the beast. So Kobayashi and his colleague were both startled and cannot believe that Ningbei executed the beast using just a piece of leaf. After that, Ningbei said that the mission has been accomplished, so he ordered Xiao Yunchen to come with him to Luo City. Then he also ordered the rest to go back to Dragon City. With an instant, Ningbei's disciples followed his order. However, Kobayashi was confused when Xiao Yunchen called Ningbei as his commander, so he was wondering if he is Lu Gi or Guo Feng. But according to this man with blue hair, neither, even though he doesn't know him. But only one person can weep that gilded Killin, and that's no other than the commander-in-chief. He can order the five commanders. Nevertheless, Ningbei together with his disciple leaves the area. At the present time, Xiao Yunchen told the northern king Ningbei that Ning Kangsheng was still alive. Then he showed to Ningbei what they had found. On this scene, Ningbei saw Ning Kangsheng that is complete alive. So Ningbei was indeed convinced that his fourth uncle was really alive. On the other hand, we can see Ning Kangsheng was selling something on the street. However, Ms. Zhao greeted Ning Kangsheng and she asked him if he's selling candied hawthorns again. So Ning Kangsheng told her that he's just making some extra money for his house. However, Ms. Zhao told him that last time, her son recommended a job for Ning Kangsheng, but he didn't went to the interview ended. Instantaneously, Ning Kangsheng's wife told Ms. Zhao that Ning Kangsheng's health isn't all that good, so she told Ms. Zhao that she doesn't have to go through so much trouble for them. With an instant, Ms. Zhao told her that it's right, but she also stated that their son needs to pay school fees, so Ms. Zhao's husband told her to give that to her. However, Ning Kangsheng's wife doesn't want to accept what Ms. Zhao was giving, so Ning Kangsheng told Ms. Zhao that they haven't even paid back the money they own her from last time. But Ms. Zhao was insisting to give this money to them and she even told them to not worry about it. Nonetheless, Ning Kangsheng's wife cannot do anything so she accept the money given by Ms. Zhao. 
After that, Lin Kangsheng's wife told her daughter to thank her auntie, so this little girl instantly followed her mother and thanked Ms. Zhao. Hey poppers, it's the end of the month. Did you pay your water bills? Stated by this bald guy while approaching them. With an instant, this old vendor immediately gave her water fee to this bald guy. Nevertheless, Mr. Liang asked Ning Kangsheng where his money was. But Ning Kangsheng told Mr. Liang that he can't make that much money in a day. But all of a sudden, Mr. Liang kicked the bicycle of Ning Kangsheng. And as a result, Ning Changsheng's candied hawthorns were spilled. After that, Mr. Liang knocked the candied hawthorns into Ning Changsheng's head. Then he told him to stop crying to him about how poor he is. In addition to Mr. Liang, 500 RMB water fees, not one cent less. All of a sudden, Ning Changsheng's daughter pushes Mr. Liang and she told him to not bully his dad. But Mr. Liang just smacked the child and told her to get out of the way. Instantaneously, this little girl cried so her mother told her to not cry but this little girl told her mother that those people are bullying his dad. All of a sudden, Ning Changsheng threw this bag of money to them. But this bald guy was enraged and he told Ning Changsheng that he dared to hide money so he said that he will beat him up. With an instant, Ning Changsheng commanded his wife to take their little girl back home. Ning, what the hell, you want to fight me? Stated by this bald guy. Without a word, Ning Changsheng attacked Mr. Liang and he managed to broke Mr. Liang's hand. That caused him to moan in pain. However, according to Ning Changsheng, they can bully him since he is a useless person. That year he could not protect his sister-in-law, much less Ning Bei. Then he even called himself again a useless person. But on that day, it involved Kin and her daughter Guo Guo. They've suffered for more than 10 years. They bullied them. But Ning Changsheng told them that at that moment, they were all going to die. Instantaneously, these guys told Ning Changsheng to shut up and go to hell. Then they approached to attack Ning Changsheng. But unfortunately, Ning Changsheng managed to attack them first and defeated these bastards. After that, these cowards suddenly run away while saying to Ning Changsheng that he better wait for next time. However, Ning Changsheng coughed badly, and his body is getting weak. With an instant, this man in white said to call an ambulance. But unexpectedly, these men from the special operations team arrived at the place. So Ning Changsheng instantly told his wife to take Guo Guo and run. But Ms. Zhao asked Ning Changsheng why would he say that. Because according to her, if those are bad people then they can call the police. However, Ning Changsheng told Ms. Zhao that some things can't be solved by the police. So he ordered her to hurry home because Ning Changsheng thinks that they are not those kind of ruffians. And in addition to Ning Changsheng, they will really execute people. Nevertheless, while these two men is in front of Ning Changsheng, Ning Changsheng said that Ning Fuguo made a good move that he even convinced the special operations team to come and execute him. After that, Ning Changsheng told them that he, Ning Changsheng will fight with them on that day. However, this man with gray hair asked him if he is Ning Changsheng. I've been hiding for 30 years. I am Ning Kangsheng, the person you want to execute, stated by no other than Ning Changsheng. But all of a sudden, these two warriors greets Ning Changsheng and they introduces themselves as Wang Long and Cheng Hu from the Central China Association. So Ning Changsheng was surprised and he was even confused what's the meaning of it. But according to Wang Long, their commander Kin ordered them out find the Ning fourth elder. Instantaneously, Ning Changsheng felt like a thorn had been pulled out of his throat, since he thought that these guys are from Fuguo's people. However, Ning Changsheng suddenly fainted so Wang Long ordered his colleague to hurry and bring all the famous doctors of Luo City there at that moment. Meanwhile, these famous doctors of Luo City arrive at Ning Changsheng's place, and while they're checking Ning Changsheng's condition, this bald doctor said that the pulmonary arteries of Ning Changsheng are severed and there's nothing they can do with the relapse of this condition. Can't be safe. I'll chop you up, stated by Chen Hu. So Chang Long stopped him and told him to not say that. You think I don't want to be cured? You think there's a point in threatening me? If you chop me up right now, it's not as if the person who's going to die can be saved, stated by this bald doctor. Instantaneously, Liu Sanjin appeared on the scene and he told this bald doctor to not blame those young men for being angry. In addition to Liu Sanjin, this bald doctor would be sentenced to death anywhere he goes. With an instant, Liu Sanjin commanded his grandson at the back to give him his silver needles. However, Ning Bei and Xiao Yunchen arrived at the place, so Chang Long instantly reported to Ning Bei that the acupuncturist is Three Needle Willows Liu Sanjin. Nevertheless, while Cheng Hu was assisting Ning Changsheng, Liu Sanjin started his job to cure Ning Changsheng, and all of a sudden, Ning Changsheng thanked Mr. Liu for saving his life. But Liu Sanjin told him to not thank him yet, because to be honest, there's nothing Liu Sanjin can do about his old injury. In addition to Liu Sanjin, 
He can only extend Ning Changsheng's life, and the Limi is only three days. With Ning Changsheng's situation, even a god would have a hard time saving him. However, Liu Sanjin was startled when Cheng Hu greeted the association leader Ning Bei. With an instant, Ning Changsheng asked him if who he is. Fourth uncle, it's me, Ning Bei stated. Ning Changsheng couldn't believe it as he asked if this man was Bayer. With an instant, Ning Changsheng and Ning Bei hugged each other. Nonetheless, when Ning Changsheng tried to talk, Ning Bei instantly told his fourth uncle that he will explain later, and as of the moment, he will cure his injury first. Cure? Did you hear yourself? My three needles can only extend his life by three days at most. Stated by Liu Sanjin. So Ning Bei told him that originally, Ning Bei wanted to see the capabilities of the legendary Three Needle Willow. But after seeing it, Ning Bei told him that it is underwhelming. After that, Ning Bei extended his hand and used his Kai to control the needles. In addition to Ning Bei, not even King Yanliuo would dare to touch his people. With an instant, these physicians were both stunned by what Ning Bei did. Liu Sanjin was also wondering who in the world is Ning Bei. Because according to him, with skills like that, Ning Bei would be ranked among the best in the nation. Nevertheless, Ning Bei has started treating his fourth uncle, using his Kai and these needles. Hellgate 7 Needles, reversing the pulmonary arteries. Who exactly are you? Stated by Liu Sanjin. However, Ning Bei told his fourth uncle to leave the silver needles in his body. And according to him, it should be fine if Ning Changsheng will force the needles out after seven days. Ning Changsheng in Stantle said okay. At this moment, when Ning Bei wore his gilded Killin cloak, Liu Sanjin was shocked because he figured out that Ning Bei is the king of the northern garrison. On the other hand, Ning Changsheng's wife asked Ning Bei how was her husband. So Ning Bei told her that his fourth uncle is okay and he just needs some rest. However, Ning Bei asked Guo Guo if she knew who he was. With an instant, Guo Guo's mother told her to greet Ning Bei as Jij. Then she introduces him as Ning Bei Dej. TL, Dej is like Jij, but Da here is big. As in the eldest brother, using brother or sister is the common way that people address cousins that share the same surname. Nonetheless, Guo Guo told Ning Bei that her dad told her Ning Bei Jij went somewhere very far away. So Guo Guo knew that meant Ning Bei Jij had died. So Ning Bei explained to her that he didn't die, and he really did come back from a far away place. After that, Ning Bei asked this little girl why her face was like that. Instantaneously, Guo Guo reported to Ning Bei that the bald man hit her and even hit her dad. Straight away, Ning Bei ordered Xiao Yunchen to find that bald man and execute him. So Xiao Yunchen instantly followed Ning Bei's order. On the other hand, this man in the front was confused where all those doctors came from. Then he asked the bald man who hurt him, so that they will cripple his arms. After a sec, this bald man pointed Ning Bei and said that's the guy. So Ning Bei instantly took off his gilded killin cloak and suddenly drew his sword. That caused this bald man's hand to be cut in the twinkling of an eye. Nevertheless, Ning Bei asked them who's next, so this man nervously replied that he's from the Axe Gang. With an instant, Xiao Yunchen slapped the face of this man while saying, Who cares where you're from? After that, Ning Bei called Xiao Yunchen. Then he ordered him to cripple them all. Right away, Xiao Yunchen agreed to Ning Bei's order. On the contrary of the scene, Ning Changsheng together with his family were preparing to leave their old home. And according to Ms. Zhao, she always knew that old Ning's family wasn't simple. But she never thought that Ning Changsheng's background was so amazing. In accordance with this guy in the center, Ning Si came there to hide. And he must have hiding from his enemies. At that moment, it seems Ning Changsheng's hard times are over. TL note. Apparently, he goes by Ning Si which is 4. The writer originally didn't translate it and just called him Ning because the writer wasn't sure what to make of the fact that they just called him Ning 4 which is more like a title since he's the fourth son. This chapter made it clear that he actually just goes by this as a name. Nevertheless, this man told Ms. Zhao that this is the money that the Ning fourth elder owes her. But Ms. Zhao was insisting to decline it. Additionally, this man gladly said to her that this is a thank you gift from the commander. So Ms. Zhao was surprised when she saw the bundles of money. Nonetheless, according to this man on the left, good people also get rewarded. And in accordance with this man on the right, he told Ms. Zhao that she had taken care of the Ning Si's family for so long and it has not been in vain. At this moment, while Ning Bei and Ning Changsheng's family were in the car, Guo Guo clarifies to Ning Bei if he's really Ning Bei Jij. So Ning Bei confirmed to her that he's the one and only. However, according to Ning Changsheng, when he was pierced through the chest with a sword, they all thought he was going to die. And in addition to Ning Changsheng, no one knew that he was born with his heart on the right side. After that, Su Qin secretly saved him. And then they hid for 13 years, all because of Ning Changsheng. Su Qin didn't even talk to her own family. 
But Su Kin told him that this way her own choice so she asked Ning Changsheng why he is bringing this up now. However, Ning Bei told Hu's fourth uncle that he should use his true name. In addition to Ning Bei, Ning Changsheng was his idol when he was young. That willful, brilliant, young fourth uncle. That oppressed everyone in his generation with his intelligence and strength. That was a long time ago. Why would you talk about that? Ning Changsheng stated. And in addition to Ning Changsheng. However, he promised Ning Bei that once they get back home, he will give up the name Ning Xi and return to being Ning Changsheng. Later in the evening, King He was standing while waiting for Ning Bei. After that, King He called Ning Bei a liar since she waited an hour and a half for Ning Bei because he said he would pick her up. But Ning Bei told her that he forgot. With an instant, Su Kin came out from the car then she asked King He if she remembered her. However, King He smiled and was glad when she saw her auntie. Ning Kenglan suddenly came out from his house and called his fourth brother. Nonetheless, all of them are joyful since they are reunited again. King He also told Su Kin that it's good since her grandmother is there too. So King He told Su Kin to come over and see her. At the present time, Su Kin called her mother. Instantaneously, this old lady called Su Kin a silly child then she asked her why she did not contact them for so long because she thought that Su Kin had already died. However, while Ning Bei and King He were staring at them, they have decided to take a walk. At this moment, Ning Bei said sorry to King He because he wasn't able to pick her up in the afternoon. So Ning Bei told her that he will make it up to her. Then he told her to tell him her wish and maybe Ning Bei can make it come true. But King He told him that he didn't have to apologize. Because after seeing her auntie, she knew what Ning Bei was doing. However, King He still has a wish. But she said that it's pointless. With an instant, Ning Bei told her to tell him. So King He told him that her first wish is that. She hoped after that day. Their grandmother and auntie will be safe. Instantaneously, Ning Bei told her that as long as he's there, they naturally will be safe. Nevertheless, King He said that her second wish is that the financing of the Su family conglomerate goes smoothly. Then her older brother can take a breather. However, Ning Bei asked King He if the Su family conglomerate was financing something. So King He replied to Ning Bei that it's already been three months. And according to King He, her eldest brother said that the progress has been really slow because the conditions over there are very harsh. But Ning Bei told her to stop financing it and let the Ning and the Su families join hands to take over as the projects of the new districts in Dragon City. Nevertheless, King He told him that it's not as simple as Ning Bei thought. After that, King He stated her third wish is that she didn't want to break off the engagement, especially when she first saw Ning Bei. But King He didn't speak it out and it's only in her mind. Nonetheless, King He said that her last wish is a small one, so she wished for someone who did not go to school to enroll in university and finish a four-year curriculum. However, while Ning Bei was staring at the beautiful face of King He, he told her that in fact, the Northern Liang Military School's diploma is much more valuable than one from a normal university. But King He told him that he had never heard of Ning Bei's Northern Liang Military School. Then she asked Ning Bei if the companies even recognized his school when the time that Ning Bei looked for a job. After that, Ning Bei just laughed at her. So King He told him that it's right since Ning Bei is the eldest son. So he will inherit the Ning conglomerate. In addition to King He, Ning Bei probably doesn't need academic credentials. However, Ning Bei told her fiancé to not worry. And Ning Bei said that he did say he had fulfilled King He's wishes. So Ning Bei can't back out now. In addition to Ning Bei, he will get a diploma from a normal university. In the same evening, the Shi family came to visit the Ning family. With an instant, Ning Kanglin came out, then he apologized to Chairman Shi for not coming out to greet him. However, Chairman Shi told him that he didn't care who won or lost in his Ning family's internal struggle since it was none of Chairman Shi's business. While entering the room, he also told Ning Kanglin that Ning Bei was too despicable. With an instant, this old lady asked Chairman Shi how did her son-in-law offend his Shi family. Jiang Xian, come here and let your grandma Su to judge the matter and help you. The eldest son of the Ning family hurt you like this, Chairman Shi stated. But Ning Changsheng suddenly interrupted them while saying that minor injuries are nothing to worry about. So Chairman Shi was getting angry while asking him if that was just a minor injury. After that, he was startled while asking Ning Changsheng if he's the fourth Ning elder. Hello there Mr. Shi, I hope you're doing well, stated by Ning Changsheng. However, Mr. Shi was confused because as far as he knew, Ning Changsheng had died long ago, so he was wondering why it seems as if there's something weird with the Ning family lately. Nevertheless, Mr. Shi told Ning Changsheng that Ning Bei injured his son to that extent. And in addition to Mr. Shi, if the Ning family doesn't give him an explanation on that day, then they were not done there. Instantaneously, Ning Changsheng asked Mr. Shi what explanations his Shi family wanted. 
So Mr. Shi told him that it's just simple. Let Ning Bei come out. Kneel down and admit his wrongdoing and they will let it go. All of a sudden, Ning Bei and King He arrived and King He angrily stated that it was Shi Jengsen who bullied Ning Bei first. But this old lady told King He that she doesn't have manners. After that, she ordered her to go away and told her that is not a place for her to speak. Nonetheless, this old lady told Ning Bei that it's not appropriate for him to hurt someone so badly. In addition to this old lady, Ning Bei should apologize to him. But Mr. Shi was enraged, and he told them that Ning Bei had to kneel down and apologize. Otherwise, the Ning family might not be able to bear the consequences. However, Ning Bei told his grandmother that she is too partial to the Shi family. What act are you putting on? She favors us, Mr. Shi stated. So this old lady told Ning him that the Shi family's grandfather is her sworn brother. No matter what, he had to show her respect that night and let the Shi family go. With an instant, Ning Bei asked Mr. Shi if he wanted Ning Bei to kneel and apologize. And in addition to Ning Bei, he was afraid that Mr. Shi's family wouldn't accept a knee from him. But Mr. Shi told him to not worry and then he said that he will accept the consequences. However, while Ning Bei was about to kneel down, this old lady suddenly shouted to Ning Bei and told him to not kneel. And even this old man told Ning Bei to not kneel. Instantaneously, Mr. Shi asked his dad why he was there. But all of a sudden, this old man slapped him and called him an unfilial bastard. After that, this old man ordered Mr. Shi to get down on his knees. But Mr. Shi was confused at the moment. So his dad was getting angry then he commanded Mr. Shi once again to kneel. With an instant, Mr. Shi cannot do anything so he kneeled. Dragon City's Shi family greets Commander Ning, stated by this old man. However, this old lady asked her third brother what he was doing. Then she told him that with her there, she would definitely protect all the children of his family. Nevertheless, Mr. Shi and his son were both shocked when the old man called Nine Bei a commander. I told you, your family cannot accept my kneel, Ning Bei stated. With an instant, Ning Bei told them to get out of his sight in seconds. This old man thanked Commander Ning Bei for his forgiveness. Then the Shi family came out from the facility. However, this old lady also said that it's time for her to go back. So her daughter Su Kin told her that she will accompany her. Nonetheless, Ning Kanglin asked Ning Bei why he offended the Shi family. So Ning Bei explained to him that it was the Shi family who provoked him. In addition to Ning Bei, Shi Jiangxian is likely pursuing King He, and there was a small altercation at the entrance of the Dragon City University. However, Ning Kanglin asked his son how many contributions he had made since Ning Bei had been at the northern border for 13 years. According to Ning Bei, protecting the country's gates, defending against foreign enemies, and guarding the frontier are all duties. But he also told his dad that credit for that is out of the question. Night passes and morning comes. While Ning Bei was meditating, King He shouted at him and called him a liar. Then she ordered Ning Bei to come down. With an instant, Ning Bei went to her. So King He asked Ning Bei if he remembered what he promised to her last night. So Ning Bei instantly told her that he will not break his promise about King He's wishes. Nevertheless, Ning Bei told his dad that he will be going out for a bit. But Ning Kanglin told him that he already knew. And in addition to Ning Kanglin, Ning Bei grew up on a military base. So her mother was worried that Ning Bei wouldn't be able to adapt to life in the society. So Ning Kanglin told Ning Bei that her mother asked King He to take Ning Bei to the Dragon City University for a few days. However, Ning Bei was confused if it was really his mom's idea. Instantaneously, King He confirmed to him that it's their mom's idea. Nonetheless, Ning Bei just smiled at her. Meanwhile, at the Dragon City University, King He told Ning Bei that as a special transfer student, first, they will have to report Ning Bei to the principal. But according to this school staff, the principal was not there. Then she told them that they will have to make an appointment to see him. But King He felt annoyed so she told the lady to forget it and she will just call the principal. But all of a sudden, King He saw Ning Bei staring at her. So King He asked Ning Bei what he was looking at. But Ning Bei just smiled and told her that it's nothing. Unfortunately, the principal was not answering King He's call so she thought that the stupid old man probably drank too much again. However, while Ning Bei was staring, in the photo of the school principal, he suddenly told King He that he would be the one to call. So King He asked him if he knew Principal Sun. At this moment, the man on the phone was asking who's the one who called him because according to him, that was a top secret line. So he asked Ning Bei where he got that number. Nonetheless, Ning Bei was just smiling while saying, It's me, your, your highness, the northern king, stated by the person on the phone. Instantaneously, this person asked Ning Bei what his order was. So Ning Bei was confirming him if the Northern Liang Military Academy had a teacher named Sun Zheng. With an instant, this person on the phone told Ning Bei that he is correct. 
and according to this person, later on, Sun Zheng was dismissed because there were complaints that he was a poor lecturer, not as good as Kong Ling and Su Yuan. Nonetheless, Ding Bei ordered the person on the phone to call Sun Zheng and tell him to call Ning Bei. After that, King He asked Ning Bei if he was taught by Professor Kong Ling and Zhu Yuan. So Ning Bei replied to her that he had sat in on their lectures then he told her that they're okay. Nevertheless, King He asks Ning Bei again if he knows how amazing those two are. And according to King He, one is the dean of their Chinese Medical Sciences College, and the other is a nuclear physicist who has won the Bell Prize. TL, if you guys didn't know this is a physics award that is awarded for contributions to quantum mechanics. However, Ning Bei told King He that she still didn't understand the Northern Liang Military School. All of a sudden, there is someone calling to Ning Bei, and when he answered it, the person on the phone said sorry to Ning Bei. Then the person explained that he was in the meeting at that moment. With an instant, Ning Bei introduces himself to Teacher Sun and he informs Teacher Sun that he and King He are at the door of the principal's office. After that, Ning Bei asked Teacher Sun if he could trouble him to come over. King He, she told me last night that someone wanted to enroll. It isn't you, is it? Stated by Teacher Sun. Then he instantly told Ning Bei that he's on his way. At this moment, Teacher Sun came out from the room to meet Ning Bei and King He. Then he invites them to come inside. After that, King He introduces Ning Bei to Teacher Sun, the one she mentioned last night. However, Teacher Sun told her that he knew Ning Bei since they had met five years ago. Let me formally introduce myself. I am Ning Bei, the eldest son of the Ning family. I was born in Dragon City, stated by Ning Bei. Instantaneously, Teacher Sun told Ning Bei that he never mentioned that when he was at the Northern Liang Military School. However, King He said that since Teacher Sun already knew Ning Bei, she told him to help Ning Bei with the admission procedures. But Teacher Sun cannot believe that Ning Bei is going to enroll, and he even said that it's not possible. So King He asked him what's wrong. According to Teacher Sun, with Mr. Ning's talent and learning, being a student is too much of a waste. So the teacher told them that he had decided that he would hire Ning Bei as an honorary dean to lecture. However, while Kain was surprised by what Teach Sun said, Ning Bei was just laughing because according to him, he can't promise that he will be present every day. Nonetheless, Teacher Sun told him to not be in such a hurry to refuse. Then Teacher Sun asked Ning Bei if this was valuable enough to cover Ning Bei's salary. With an instant, King He asked if that's a diamond. So Ning Bei told her that it's a spirit stone. And according to Ning Bei, the Tang Kingdom was established with martial arts. This is something martial artists needed daily for their cultivation. Unfortunately, ancient martial arts traditions are practically gone. And in addition to Ning Bei, spirit stones can no longer be found and spirit herbs all withered. However, Teacher Sun told Ning Bei to come and be a dean at university. Then he asked Ning Bei if one stone a month is okay with him. But Ning Bei also asked him if he did stockpile a lot of spirit stones. Nevertheless, Teacher Sun just told him that he only has one but he also told Ning Bei to not worry because he can find more of them for him. With an instant, Ning Bei told him that three stones a month then he will promise him. Straight away, Teacher Sun gladly said it's a deal. However, King He asked Ning Bei why Teacher Sun left. So Ning Bei told her that Teacher Sun said he was going to find more spirit stones for him. At this moment, these men together with Teacher Sun were heading to Ning Bei and King He. All of a sudden, this man on the left asked Teacher Sun if it's him while pointing to Ning Bei. And this man on the right was also confused since Ning Bei was such a young man so he asked Teacher Sun if he was going to let Ning Bei lecture. However, Teacher Sun asks Mr. Lai if he still remembers the theory of anti-gravity published by Mr. Yan in the Global Academic Journal. With an instant, Mr. Lai answered, of course. And according to him, that paper has pushed the progress of anti-gravity research forward by 10 years. But Mr. Lai asked Teacher Sun what did that have to do with Ning Bei. Unexpectedly, Teacher Sun told him that. That paper was written by none other than Ning Bei. So these men were all surprised and couldn't even believe what they had heard. Because according to Mr. Lai, why would Mr. Yan steal other people's achievements? Instantaneously, Ning Bei replied to him that it is not considered stealing when he allowed it. However, Mr. Lai was still doubting so he asked Ning Bei to tell him what the contents of the paper were. Right away, Ning Bei stated that it's industrialization of anti-gravity. So these men were all speechless while staring at Ning Bei. But Ning Bei told them that his time is limited so Ning Bei won't stay and chat with them. But all of a sudden, Mr. Lai told Ning Bei to wait. Then he told him that he had a spirit stone too. Nevertheless, while Ning Bei was staring at the spirit stone, these men also told Ning Bei that they had one too. So Ning was surprised. So they asked them if all of them had one. Nonetheless, according to Mr. Lai, 10 years ago, Chen went to investigate the Dragon City Mountain. 
and in addition to Mr. Lai, Mr. Chen picked it up from the mountain and thought it was a diamond. However, after coming back and testing it, he noticed that the chemical composition did not match with diamond. So he just gave each of them a few pieces. And when Teacher Sun said that Ning Bei needed those things, so they brought them over. After that, this man on the left agreed with Mr. Lai then he also said that he had one too. Instantaneously, Ning Bei asked them where in the Dragon City Mountain they did find it. However, Mr. Lai told Ning Bei that he had to ask Mr. Chen. So Ning Bei instantly asked where Professor Chen was. But according to Teacher Sun, Professor Chen died a long time ago. So at the back of Ning Bei's mind, so then no one knows the location. Nonetheless, Teacher Sun said that as a dean, Mr. Ning Bei will be qualified to evaluate professors. In addition to Teacher Sun, he will personally check this matter. You've got to be kidding. Based on this anti-gravity paper alone, it is not difficult for Mr. Ning to be considered an academic, stated by Mr. Lai. However, this man told Ning Bei that a dean usually guides students and is responsible for leading big scientific research projects. In accordance with Mr. Lai, Ning Bei must come to their side, because according to him, the main direction of their scientific research is the industrialization of anti-gravity. But Ning Bei just told them that they will talk about that later. As of the moment, Ning Bei wanted to know more about those rocks. So this man told Ning Bei that Professor Chen and Wang were the ones to investigate them at the Dragon City Mountain but they didn't know anything more. In addition to this man, at the moment, both of them are gone. With an instant, Ning Bei asked them how many days they were at the Dragon City Mountain. According to Mr. Lai, they were at the Dragon City Mountain for about 10 days. And in addition to him, they didn't bring much food. So they were gone for a total of 10 days. At the back of Ning Bei's mind, in 10 days, two people can't go too far in the Dragon City Mountain. So Ning Bei thought that the area they searched must be within a 100 mile radius. TL note, author uses miles here, but given previous use of Chinese measurement standards, I don't know if this mile is the old Chinese mile or the imperial mile. The Chinese mile varied anywhere from 406.8 meters to 576 meters depending on the dynasty. So the author could actually be meaning something between 25 to 35 mile radius or actually 100 mile radius. Nevertheless, at the back of Ning Bei's mind, the Spirit Stone Mine is in that area. At the present time, King He asked Ning Bei where he will go next. So Ning Bei just told her that he will be going back home. In addition to Ning Bei, with that Spirit Stone, it will be easy to let his mother stand up. Nonetheless, at the back of King He's mind, it looks like having Ning Bei attend school is hopeless. All of a sudden, while Ning Bei was on the road, he noticed that something happened in that area. Is the ambulance so amazing? Compensate me for my car, stated by this man in white. However, this man in a suit told him that driving while drunk was a crime. But this fat guy suddenly slapped him while saying, So what if I beat you? Do you know who I am? I am Du Hao. Nonetheless, the people in the crowd were shocked when they heard that the fat guy is from the Du family. This man with a blue jacket even told them to not provoke the fat guy. On the other hand, this lady was crying and begging to save his grandfather. In addition to this young lady, her brother just came back from the northern border and he has been there for 10 years. And he just wanted to see their grandfather. Grandfather, hold on, didn't you say you want to see my brother again? Stated by this young lady. At this moment, Ning Bei told this fat guy to let go of the man and save his life. You, who are you trying to intimidate? You dare to threaten me. Stated by this fat guy. But Ning Bei just ignored him. All of a sudden, this fat guy took out a knife and approached Ning Bei. Nevertheless, Ning Bei just hit him effortlessly and he threw himself. After that, this fat man was crying and moaning in pain while shouting his hand. However, Ning Bei went to this man. And according to him, this one can't be saved. Ning Bei also asked this young lady if his brother is in Northern Liang. Instantaneously, this lady answered yes. Then she asked Ning Bei if he could save his dad. So Ning Bei just told her not to worry because his dad will be fine, since minor illnesses are easy to treat. But this young lady was doubting because according to her, half a year ago, the doctor told them that it's a miracle that their grandfather survived until that day. All of a sudden, this doctor rushly went towards them while asking how Mr. Kaiao was. With an instant, this young lady called the doctor his uncle Jeng. Nonetheless, Dr. Jeng told Yiron that it's okay, and he also told her to not cry. After that, he commanded his colleague to quickly send Mr. Kaio back to the hospital. But Ning Bei told them that the patient is in critical condition, so he told this man to not move the patient at that time. 
However, Dr. Zheng asks Ning Bei who he was, but Ning Bei just ignored his questions and instantly ordered him to give him his silver needles. So this man was confused how Ning Bei knew that he's carrying silver needles. With an instant, Ning Bei once again used his Kai to control these silver needles, then used it to treat Mr. Kaio. However, Dr. Zheng was startled when Ning Bei used his Kai to control the needles. All of a sudden, Ning Bei took out his spirit stone and used it to treat Mr. Kaio. With an instant, Mr. Kaio's eyes suddenly opened. Then he told Mr. Kaio that on that day, he had prolonged his life for one year. And in addition to Ning Bei, if Mr. Kaio takes good care of himself, he can live for three more years. After that, all Ning Bei was about to leave the area. Mr. Kaio called him a miracle doctor. Then he begged him to wait. Please let me know your name. This debt today, we will pay you back someday. Stated by Du Hao. But all of a sudden, Ning Bei attacked him again by just waving his hand. And as a result, Du Hao fell on the ground while vomiting blood. Instantaneously, people in this area were all startled by what Ning Bei did. However, Mr. Kaio called Ning Bei a doctor. Then he told him to not worry because he will help him settle that matter. After that, Mr. Kaio gave Ning Bei his business card and he told him that if Ning Bei had any difficulties in the Dragon City, Ning Bei can come to him. Thank you, Mr. Stated by Ms. Yeren. But Ning Bei told her that she doesn't need to thank him. Then he asked Yiren what her brother's name was. With an instant, Yiren told him that her brother's name is Kaio Dong. Kaio Dong, the wolf of the eastern capital, Ning Bei stated. So Mr. Kaio asked Ning Bei if he knew his brother. So Ning Bei told him that Mr. Kaio's brother is a hero. And according to Ning Bei, Kaio Dong served as the head of the Baiying army, in charge of a hundred thousand elites, and was named the wolf of the eastern capital. In addition to Ning Bei, Kaio Dong has made outstanding military exploits. Nonetheless, Mr. Kaio and Yeren were happy by what they heard. However, Ms. Yeren asked Ning Bei what his name was, so he just simply introduced himself as Ning Bei. Then while leaving, Ning Bei told them that if there is trouble in the future, they can go to the Ning family house to find him. Mr. Kaio and Yeren were speechless at this moment. On the other hand, Kin Hulan was amazed and told Ning Bei that she's able to walk at that moment. Nonetheless, at the back of Ning Bei's mind, seven spirit stones were worth it for that. All of a sudden, Mu Zai came in while congratulating Kin Hulan for recovering. So Kin Hulan told her to come in and sit down. However, Mu Zai just reported to the northern king Ning Bei that 10 billion USD from the corporation has all transferred to the Ning conglomerate's accounts. With an instant, Ning Bei ordered her to go to the Ning conglomerate and assist in the establishment of a subsidiary. Then he told her to go to the Dragon City Mountain for a geological survey. So Mu Zai instantly followed Ning Bei's order. And after Mu Zai leaves, Kin Hulan asked Ning Bei why he wanted to start a geological survey company. Instantaneously, Ning Bei told her that he wanted to find something. That's all for today. Thank you so much. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. Please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more content like this. Until next time.